We're 13 minutes past eight now on the Radio Wama Breakfast. Kia ora, good afternoon. Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard and former leader Kevin Rudd look set to go head to head in a fierce leadership challenge that's been brewing for weeks. Rudd resigned from his post as Foreign Minister last night at an emergency press conference in the United States saying the political soap opera has to stop. Three... It has to stop indeed. It's State of It with um, Sawa Manning from livenews.co.nz. Sawa, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Glenn. Now, the situation across the ditch is, um, is starting to look, make us look really stable, um, you know, with our coalition governments and whatnot. Uh, it's just Absolutely. just madness. I don't know what to make of it. Well, it's been a long time coming. Um, really, you know, months and months before Julia Gillard rolled Kevin Rudd, there was a destabilisation campaign that was going on at that time to roll Kevin Rudd. Now, ironically, Julia Gillard, who was obviously the Australian Prime Minister at the moment, um, uh, came out yesterday basically accusing Kevin Rudd of the same kind of tactics, that he was orchestrating a, a, a um, destabilisation campaign against her leadership. Now, quite clearly, uh, a lot was going on um, to cause Kevin Rudd to actually put up his hand and say, I'm going to resign my Minister of Foreign Affairs role um, and I'm just absolutely livid with the way that Julia Gillard is leading our caucus. What, what stimulated him to taking that response? And you've got to remember, he did that while he was over on official foreign affairs business in Washington in the United States um, when, he, when he resigned. Yeah. Was that basically um, a wave of his, his um, adversaries, I suppose, uh, inside the... In, inside the La uh, Australian Labor Party caucus, but significantly amongst the federal cabinet, uh, people like Wayne Swan and Simon Crean, etc., started to absolutely character assassinate uh, Kevin Rudd while he was away offshore. Um, that intensified last week to a point where, you know, what we saw uh, yesterday is Kevin Rudd saying, enough's enough. Um, this is not doing the Australian uh, country any good. It's certainly bringing the Labor Party into disrepute. Um, I resign my position. I'm going to do something about this. I'm livid with the Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, because she did not censor these very senior members of her cabinet um, in, in, the, in an attack on her foreign minister. And he was adamant that his credibility and professionalism in both political stakes and also as a, in the governance stakes uh, was not going to be damaged. Then he sowed the seed and seeded that he was obviously going to uh, have a go at um, taking the Prime Ministership back from Julia Gillard. Uh, it's, it's interesting, though, that how, you know, like, because he was rolled and we remember seeing him on TV, he looked very unhappy. In fact, I think he even shed a tear um, on, yes. on screen as well. It's, the, it's as though he's gone through the grieving process in reverse. You know, you start off with anger, don't you? And then you move through that and then you finally come to acceptance. But there's been no, obviously, no acceptance in there. Well, maybe. Maybe it's been a long train coming. You know, he had the grief at the beginning, you know, that awful shock and the emotion. He was standing there, like you remember, with his wife and his children. Um, and, and there was a tear shed. It's obviously, you know, he's got stuck into his work and it's that kind of numb period. And as, as things are going on and as he has been um, the focus of many a jab himself, he is thinking right, I've had a guts fall and I'm coming out. So, yeah, maybe there is a pattern to that. But, man, this guy, uh, he, uh, from my own experience of um, watching him at um, press conferences and things like that and putting a couple of questions to him, he is a very, uh, he's almost uncharismatic. You know, honestly, there's, there's not a lot of charisma around this guy. Huh. But he is very careful and calculating in his responses and where he moves, what he is going to be addressing, where he'll, you know, the limits of his engagement. And um, just watching his, his reception of questions from the Australian Press Gallery, which I've got to say is a very, very vicious machine compared to ours here in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, he is a clearly clear-thinking kind of guy. Um, if you comp compare to his reign as Prime Minister and his campaign when he rolled John Howard from the Prime Ministership yeah. um, and in the elections to Julia Gillard, you've got to say that Kevin Rudd has a much more stable 
firm hand on the way the Australian government would go on particular issues. Uh, in recent, uh, Julia Gillard's been dogged by problems ever, ever since she took the leadership, um, you know, her style of which she did, the internal kind of coup on Kevin Rudd, the knife in the back of Kevin Rudd, etc, etc. But more so, if you look at in recent weeks, it's almost like she's lost control. You know, you, you had um, her, her um, diplomatic protection squad basically on Australia Day having to pick her up and run her yeah. to safety because yeah. of fears protesters were going to get their teeth into her. Um, then, then you saw, like under the pressure in Adelaide this week, early, um, not yesterday, the day before, and you saw uh, her, her, her um, entourage car basically run over journalists. Yeah. Uh, journalist's legs trapped under. He ended up um, in hospital, um, and I understand still there. You know, so it's almost like the symbols around um, Julia Gillard are not good. And you know what politics is like, Glenn. It's you know, it's all about impressions, mm. but. A lot of this comes down to when Kevin Rudd was campaigning, early campaigning, it wasn't the election campaign, but early campaigning um, toward the last um, federal government election that they had in Australia, uh, he was rolled. And a lot of the, um, the, the policies that he was putting in place were overturned by Julia Gillard. What, what was, uh, things was, like the mining tax, the, uh, you know, the mining tax, the, the carbon tax, etc., cetera, et cetera. Was he not, um, was, was he not supportive of those? Well, he was and then he wasn't. And I think that's where you saw this campaign pragmatist coming in. He, he was looking for, at that time, you could see his policies were looking for common ground with that huge, huge lobby um, of, of the mining lobby in, on, in Australia. But remember that the mining lobby, it employs people not only from every state in Australia um, that often are commuting like on two weeks on, two weeks off type yeah. of thing, um, but as New Zealand, is, it, it just draws, but it's such a huge employer. And, and see that's, now, he was looking for common ground um, where Julia Gillard came out with policies that were clearly unpalatable um, to, to, to that, um, that policy. And, and I guess this is, this is pure speculation, but I mean, I, I mean, obviously there's a lot of internal politics going on here, but he's the foreign minister. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. out there talking to diplomats and he's overseas all the time talking to world leaders. How much do you think, uh, as part of this, is, is foreign meddling? Uh, you know, uh, and, and those diplomats saying to Rudd, actually, we preferred your direction, we preferred what you were doing, now, you know, we could, yeah, have, we, we, we could chat to our buddies in Australia and we could, you know, somehow yeah. work this out for you. Yeah, there's a couple of things that possibly in play there. One is, yes, he's got a direct conduit, a communication conduit to Australia's diplomats, but also overseas diplomats from other, other economies who are feeding in consequential impact kind of information to him, which directly involves, you know, the export-led kind of policies that the Australian federal government would be trying to actually adjust. If his prime minister is not in keeping with those types of changes that he is saying is necessary, and remember, it's a shifting field all the time, particularly in financial crisis terms and cycles, um, then he would be dissatisfied on that. There's another thing about Australia's brand. Now, remember, under John Howard, we saw Australia advancing as a power in this region, a most significant power, and also on the world stage, taking people, were, um, nations were taking notice of Australia's position um, on various things. We saw that continue under Kevin Rudd. We've got to say, under Julia Gillard, Australia has lost its way and has become almost... I'm not saying it's like New Zealand under Murray McCulley that is, you know, and, our, and John Key that has um, become almost irrelevant on the on the foreign uh, kind of uh, tracks. But Australia under Julia Gillard's prime ministership has not weighed had the gravitas perhaps that the previous administrations have. Mm -hmm. One would imagine that that would be a, a very much a weighing factor in, in the caucus decision that is going to be taken the ballot on on Monday at ten o'clock Australian Eastern daylight time, time, which would be around about midday New Zealand time, I'd understand. And uh, she's laid down the gauntlet as well. Um, she's saying that if, yeah. if either of us lose, we go all the way back to the back benches. How extraordinary. Well, she's saying that that's her commitment, that if she loses the prime ministership to Kevin Rudd and the ballot, the leadership of the ALP and therefore the prime ministership on Monday, then, yep, she's committed to going back to the back bench. She's not interested in being in the cabinet. And if that's the case, um, she will, you know, she will not, 
our pitch for the Australian Prime Ministership or the leadership of the ALP ever again. Yeah. And she, yeah, she's put the gauntlet down. Kevin Rudd, I'd expect you to actually meet that challenge as well. So what she's trying to do there is to put it to bed. And, you know, you can see both are saying, both these people, Kevin Rudd and uh, Julia Gillard are both saying, this inside kind of factional fighting is doing one thing mainly, and just that is destroying the Labour Party's chances of winning the elections in 2013. Mm. Um, they're both unified on that. That's their common ground. What we can see is uh, Kevin Rudd arrives back in Australia um, later this morning, New Zealand time, I think uh, it looks like about 10.30, uh, 9.30, somewhere around there. Um, and they're expecting him to hit the ground, to get on the phones to those fringe areas, Glenn, those fringe uh, members of the ALP caucus and sway them over to his side. He's trying to actually, too, they, they call, they're calling it the stealth move that he did overseas, that he absolutely knocked Julia Gillard for six, um, that she is responding and not leading this particular challenge, mm. um, that he has got a momentum behind him. On count yesterday, uh, early yesterday morning, it was understood there were 40 MPs already on his side out of a total of 103 ALP MPs that would be voting. Now, it's expected that he'll pull in more fringe ones as they see that momentum heading toward Rudd. Remember, though, that the character assassinations are continuing and intensifying, um, particularly from inside the Labour Party. Um, uh, people like Wayne Swan, for example, he knows, as um, he's, you know, he's the treasurer over there, he knows that under a Kevin Rudd-led um, administration, he's likely to be out. Mm. Um, they'll be out of his cabinet job, um, irrespective of how competent he has been. Um, other people like, obviously, Simon Crean, uh, who has a faction all of his own, that really in some ways stimulated Kevin Rudd's response uh, this week to actually chuck you know, his, his job as foreign minister out of the window. Um, now, Simon Crean had been stimulating uh, trying to get Rudd to have a retaliatory uh, kind of move mm. like that. And Simon Crean's faction has always uh, wanted to see Simon Crean get up within striking distance of the leadership. Now, if these two people, Kevin Rudd and Julia Gillard, self-destruct to a degree, then they limp on through till the next election next year. Mm then, you know, you might see that Simon Crean or, you know, factions close to him are the ones that pick up the mess after that election should Labor fin uh, be finished at the polls. Um, Kevin Rudd reckons he's the only one that can reunify uh, the AL ALP and to take it to a success at the next election. Mm. And really, I suppose that's what I'm getting at at the beginning of the bulletin, Glenn, that he does have the cred of being able to roll um, a pretty impressive election campaign out. It, it, it takes a, a political mastermind, in a sense, to have rolled John Howard out of the prime ministership. Mm. Kevin Rudd did that, and it was a clever move, and it was a simple one that came down to one message, that at that time, at that election, um, John Howard, he said, were the Conservatives. They were going nowhere. He said the left-right debate is, is in the past. This is about conservatism and old politics and mm. progressive